In Naruto, gods are a really complex subject. For example, there are multiple types of gods. Death god, rabbit god, literal god Jashin, who grant people immortality, etc. And in today's video, I'll be explaining all of it. But before we get into it, make sure to like the video and subscribe for more. It sure helps a lot to provide you guys with more videos. I hope all of you have a great day. Now, let's analyze the gods from Naruto. Firstly, I want to start with Shinigami, the Death God, which it's probably the most popular god in the Naruto fanbase. Ever since it made its debut, it has become one of the most popular techniques despite being used only twice by Hiruzen and once by Minato. This character has a very interesting design. It is a translucent, gaunt specter with a demonic visage. It is much larger than an average human, possessing long, shaggy, white hair from which two red horns protrude, as well as purple-colored skin. It is draped in a large white kimono and carries a set of prayer beads. When not using it, the Shinigami is almost always seen with a tanto in its mouth. When removed, however, its mouth is revealed to be full of sharp, jagged teeth and a very long, almost serpentine tongue. When sealing a target, a series of cursed seals spreads across its arms. There are a lot of clans in Naruto, but I think the most interesting one is the Uzumaki clan. They have much more in common with the Otsutsuki clan than any other. The Uzumaki clan somehow managed to contact the Death God and made some kind of pact that made them able to summon it. Because of its appearance, a lot of people think that Death God is from the Otsutsuki clan, and it's not surprising since they share a lot of things in common in terms of appearance. They, for example, have white hair like all Otsutsuki, horns like them, and appear to wear the same type of traditional clothing. This could be true, but I think something different. In Uzumaki Temple, we can see 26 different masks, which most likely allow people to summon different creatures, just like Shinigami. We can see that all of them have horns like Shinigami, but some of them have different kinds of horns, just like Otsutsuki's. Every horn we've seen so far from Otsutsuki's is different from each other, and I think it's because of the fact that they each consume a different type of chakra fruit. I think the same could be said for Shinigamis. In my opinion, they are their own race, different from the Otsutsuki clan. In the Boruto novel, Momoshiki and Kinshiki state that Earth's civilization acquired unnecessary intelligence, implying that there are other civilizations in space besides the Otsutsuki's and Shinigami's race. They could be doing the same thing as Otsutsuki's, eating chakra fruits which enabled them to get white hair and horns, just like Otsutsuki's. However, we know that the Otsutsuki clan destroys civilizations by eating their chakra fruits. So how does the Shinigami race still exist? I think they may have made some kind of pact with the Otsutsuki clan. They could even be allies like the Uzumaki and Senju clans, since the Shinigamis seem to be strong and, in my opinion, could even rival the Otsutsuki clan. Different realms aren't something unusual in the Naruto world. We know that the Limbo world exists in Naruto. Tsukuyomi could also be regarded as its own universe. And who knows, Shinigamis could be from their own realm, different from our main timeline. Another interesting thing about Shinigamis is their weird connection with the curse mark. If we look closely, when stealing a target, a series of cursed seals spread across its arms. Interestingly enough, we can see exactly the same markings on Shikaku's The One Tails, which allows him to seal his opponent. Another interesting thing about Shinigami's design is its eyes. They are the same as the eyes of curse marked users. Both of them have yellow eyes with a darkened sclera, so who knows, there could be some kind of connection. We know that curse marks are developed after absorbing too much natural energy from Ryuchi Cave. Shinigamis could have all also had something to do with Sage Chakra as well. Another mysterious otherworldly being in Naruto is Jashin. We know even less about him than Shinigami. Unlike the Death God, we do not even know how Jashin looks. Little of Jashin and his ways is known to those who aren't his followers, so-called Jashinists. According to Hidan, Jashin demands nothing less than utter death and destruction. Hidan frames this as a public service, saving people from the fear of death by killing them. One's neighbors are the most ideal target, but Hidan explains to Ameyuki that a neighbor requires more than just physical proximity. Hidan spends most of his time with Kakuzu, but he will never consider Kakuzu to be his neighbor because he hates Kakuzu. Hidan always prays to Jashin before a fight, asking for a good kill. If he is unsuccessful or is not allowed to kill, he prays for forgiveness. As I said earlier, we know almost nothing about Jashin, including its design, but there are some clues that we can use to determine some things about him. Firstly, Jashin is real. He really existed. It is not some kind of made-up god by Hidan. Also, it seems at some point he came to Earth and people saw and feared his power. Otherwise, why would they worship something if it does not exist? I believe Jashin 
Jashin is from a different realm or planet than Earth, and I doubt that it is an Otsutsuki. I believe he is a much more evolved creature. He directly affects death, which is something even Otsutsukis struggle against. That alone puts him higher than any of the Otsutsukis except for the hypothetical Otsutsuki, who was shown during a conversation between Code and Ishiki. I think if Jashin was an Otsutsuki, he would be in the highest tier of Otsutsuki. There is also another possibility that Jashin could be the king of hell. Heaven exists in Naruto. It's where most spirits go. When Kakashi temporarily died, he talked to his father in heaven. When Obito died, he talked to Rin in heaven. If heaven exists, then so does hell, and Jashin could be the ruler of it. We haven't yet seen Jashin's appearance in anime, manga, or movies, but Surge Studio is one of the websites that owns the exclusive license to create Naruto action figures. While looking at their Hidan action figure, we can see their interpretation of Lord Jashin, who is seen behind Hidan. I really like this design and I hope whenever Jashin appears in the series, he will be depicted like this. He really looks like a being that is out of this world. I assume that when Hidan gained immortality, he met Jashin, who directly modified his body so that he would be almost immortal. I think this could be one of the reasons why Hidan is such a hard believer in Jashin and Jashinism, because he has seen the miracles of Jashin by himself. Now, let's talk about the Otsutsuki God and everything we know about him. Firstly, I want to address the fact that some kind of hierarchy in the Otsutsuki clan exists. Momoshiki and Ishiki are clearly superior to Kinshiki and Kaguya, while Urashiki is below all of them. But Momoshiki and Ishiki themselves are below the other Otsutsukis, to whom they have to send their report, and their final and perfect god form is achievable after consuming countless chakra fruits. It seems Otsutsuki God is a user of three Jogan. Ishiki is a very interesting character. He is one of the strongest, if not the strongest, character we have seen so far. He came to Earth with Kaguya, just like Momoshiki and Kinshiki, but unlike that duo, he was betrayed by his partner, Kaguya, who backslashed him and left him near death. Despite all of that betrayal, thousands of years have passed, and we've never seen any help for Ishiki from the Otsutsuki clan. He had to do everything by himself. Even when the Otsutsuki trio came to Earth, they did it to punish Kaguya. This means they knew she betrayed her clan, as well as her partner, but they did not do anything to help Ishiki. The very reason for that could be that Ishiki may have had a conflict with his clan, or he could be too power hungry, which may have irritated the Otsutsuki leaders, which is why they were ignoring him, or something like that. Anyway, we know very little about Ishiki's past, and I hope someday we will hear more about it in some way in the near future. The verified information that Jigen told Code is that the Otsutsuki god isn't specifically a being, but a form that Otsutsuki can achieve by eating as many chakra fruits as possible and devouring planets. It's basically the ultimate being that has the most chakra. Another fact we know is that the identity of the Otsutsuki god hasn't been revealed yet. It's pretty clear that after Boruto chapter 53, Someone in the universe has already achieved this form and has awakened the Jogan. Also, we know that the Otsutsuki god is the same person who gave Toneri his Jogan. Since Otsutsukis are being defeated by shinobis and their powers are spread on Earth, I wonder if in upcoming events there will be episodes where Boruto or Kawaki meet this god to obtain peace. Well, let's see. I think in this way or another, we'll get to see God since we got a sneak peek of it and it's official that it exists. Everything else about it is unknown, but we will definitely get more information about it in the upcoming years in Boruto Shippuden. Anyway, I guess this is all for today. What do you think about the gods in Naruto? Who do you want to know more about? Let me know in the comments.